season of self-examination, a season of discipline and of refocus for us and for our faith. And we use the, the 40 days, it, uh, among other things, it mimics the 40 days of temptation in the wilderness of Christ. Um, and it, it reminds us that we too, like he, have to look inside ourselves and be reminiscent of what our purpose is. And so this evening's service is centered around that sense of purpose for our life of faith together. I extinguished the first candle of the Lenten cross, signifying the beginning of our holy season, and invite you to turn in your hymn books to uh, number 85 as we sing, What Wondrous Love Is This? Trust that you can all hear me better now. I would like it if we could quiet ourselves uh, this evening and begin uh, a time of prayer together that will start with silent prayer. And when in a moment or so that has uh, pro proceeded, uh, I will lead us uh, in prayer before we hear from God's word. So let us begin in a silent time of prayer as we begin our holy season.
Holy One of Israel, we come with a sense of humility before your mercy seat this evening, understanding that our relationship to you, our standing before you, is based not on our own doing, not on our good works, but on the Christ in whom we have trusted. Who we are as a group, as a people, as a church family, is a reflection of what it means to be in fellowship that begins with the extension of the right hand of Jesus Christ. Who we are as individuals is a cleansed version of the best that is within us through the image of God, cleansed by the blood of Christ of the unrighteousness and the self-centeredness that characterizes the lives that human beings tend to live. And so we ask that you would prepare us as individuals and as a church family, we who are gathered this evening to begin this, this season and all who call Oak Hill Church, their home, and all who are the body of Christ, call to us by your Holy Spirit, Lord. Call to us and awaken us from our slumber and ask us to be the people you envisioned us to be even before the foundation of the world. This we ask in faith, in the name of the Christ whom you sent to us and in the power of the Holy Spirit, whom he has given to us and poured out upon each of us to bring us wisdom and newness and life. We pray as a people of faith. Amen. With that idea of fresh faith, I ask us to listen with open ears to God's word as it is recorded for us in Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. And this begins in the fifth chapter, toward the end of the chapter. I will beginning, be beginning the reading with verse 20. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, Be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's fellow workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain, for he says, In the time of my favor, I heard you, and in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you now that this is the time of God's favor, and now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry cannot be discredited. Dear friends, this is the word of the Lord. And again, let us pray. Blessed God, allow it to be that your word speaks to us. And where there is any deviation, we pray that you would gather us to yourself so that there would be no distance between we and thee. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So, The we in the text of Scripture that was read is the apostles, the the ones to whom the gospel was initially entrusted to give it to as many as would hear and receive it with fresh faith. And he reminds us that the time of our redemption is upon us. The time is now. And, you know, somehow in the recesses of our mind, we know that we know this, and yet... What happens is, well, life. Life starts to happen. We go places. Have you ever gone someplace on an errand 
and gone in perhaps to a store and you see, oh, we need this and we definitely need that. Well, that's right, we're out of this and we're out of that. And you get to the checkout and you get to the car and you're halfway home and you realize, I forgot the main thing I went there for. If that hasn't happened to you, then take solace in the fact that it can because it has happened to me on more than one occasion. On one particular occasion, this was really crucial. Allison was making pies. There was not enough cinnamon for the apple pie. She sent me to get the cinnamon. And oh, by the way, while you're there, if you could pick up this and this and this. And I got this and this and this. What I didn't get was the cinnamon. I came in the door said, I'm going to have to leave again. Here's these things. I'll be right back. She said, where are you going? I said, I forgot the cinnamon. Well, it's easy enough to do. When it happens, and it does happen, that we get into a rhythm, because life is so busy, and our, our worship day comes. It's generally Sunday, the first day of the week for the, for the ancient Hebrews, because that was the day that Christ resurrected from the dead. And so it became their day to gather and to worship. And they referred to it as the Lord's Day. So we gather on the Lord's Day. We get into a rhythm. We do what we do. We come. There's a prelude. Karen was kind enough to play a beautiful prelude, wonderful piece of music, beautiful prelude for us this evening. On Sunday mornings, we hear prelude. We sing it robustly at the opening hymn. We go through doing what we do. I take great delight when it's time for the children who are my peers to come and join me here on the steps and to bring with them all the little friends, the little fuzzy friends that they brought Brooklyn's got her Jesus doll with her this evening. And uh, that's a great time. And, and we go through doing what we do. And, and dare I say it, lest we forget it, that, that we get in the habit of our religion. And, and sometimes, and this may not be you, and this may not be right now, and it may not be any time recently, and I hope it's not any time in the near future, but it is possible to have it happen that we get into our rhythm of doing what we do, doing what we do, doing what we do, how we do what we do, and lose sight of our main purpose. Our main purpose for coming and being with one another in a context of worship is to be in the presence of God, to worship the Christ that he sent to us, and to hear the revelation of God's will spoken to us in the word of God. The centerpiece of the word of God is the Christ who is the living word. Amen and amen. It's always going to be true. But there's a fullness of the counsel of God found in the word of God and we, we study it and we listen to it. We read it aloud, sections of scripture, some that we've heard 19 times before, but we hear again with fresh faith the message that God has for us that day. Why do we do that? Because the day is now, the time is now. This is the time of our redemption. God once upon a time promised that in, I will come for you and bestow my salvation upon you in that, in that day of your redemption. We could ask and do ask sometimes, in the context of our culture, to people, one person of faith to another, when were you saved? When did, when did you become a person of faith? And you, you know that you've heard me say before, we all became people of, of salvation and of redemption on AD 27 on the cross at Golgotha. And that's true. But it does have to come upon you as an individual. And no one else can have that faith for you. I said a couple of months ago in, in a message, God has no grandchildren. God has children. That faith that is planted within you is your faith, inspired by God's Holy Spirit for you. And so the imploring that comes from these initial apostles, these ones that were sent 
you know, to Corinth, but to all of us, if I may, to read this again, be reconciled to God. God made him, who is Christ, who had no sin, to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. When we do the will of God, as, as the word instructs us to do, when we do God's will, we love our neighbors as we love ourselves, we consider others more important than, than ourselves, when we, when we devote ourselves to pleasing God rather than pleasing human beings and being popular because of it, when we do those things, we, we become, according to Paul in his letter to the Romans, we become transformed by a renewing of our mind. It's a mindset. Be reconciled to God means to understand that we come and we come into a context and it's a faith context and it's for the purpose of our reconciliation to God because we have sin. It's not just that we have in the past sinned. We have sin that we carry with us. It's a nature. It's a self-centeredness. It's a, it's a penchant for looking after me first and everything else after that. It's a penchant for saying, I'm going to get what I want no matter who I have to step on to get it. And I'm not saying we as... as that, that all of that is true of every individual that's here. Not what I'm saying. I'm saying that that's who we as humanity are. And so we are reconciled to God that we might become the righteousness of Christ. Sure, because the righteousness of Christ lives and breathes through us as we transform into the people that God called to do the work that God prepared in advance for us to do. Let's not lose sight of our purpose. And the Lenten season is a perfect time, a perfect moment in our, in our life of faith to reorder what our priorities are and to understand what our purpose is in being together a worshiping community and for each of us then within that community as individuals what our purpose is, is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. Two men who were not young went for a walk together, strolling along on an autumn day, about perfect temperature. Sun was shining, wasn't too hot, hadn't gotten cold yet. The colors were out. One says to the other one, Paul, do you ever find yourself thinking of the hereafter? Paul said, yeah, I sure do. I go into a room and I say, what did I come here after? <laughs> we came here after something. We came here after the word of God, after our reconciliation to understand that this is the day of our salvation. This, these are the days of our redemption. These are the days of the retransforming of our minds and the reordering of our priorities. We focus on that because to do that is to understand an, a, purpose, a purpose for the living of our lives that was in place before we were born and will be our purpose for as long as there is time in the presence of God. So I welcome you into this time of Ash Wednesday worship. I welcome you into this season of the Lenten season. And I welcome all of us into a refocus of what our discipleship is all about. And it is centered on the one who remains with us, around us and upon us, a living word. In his name, let us do pray. Blessed Jesus, your ways are different than our ways. We confess that to you. But we want, we want to be closer and more like unto your ways. 
And so we pray that you would teach us, guide us, instruct us, bring your salvation to us, your wisdom, your righteousness, so that we might be the righteousness of God. Let your will be done in the life of your people. Order us in such a way, knowing that the yoke that we take upon us is not burdensome, for your yoke is easy and your burden is light. And we will find rest for our souls, for you are filled with rest. Bless each of us, we pray, as people of faith, in your holy and precious name. Amen. So, on the night in which the Lord was betrayed into the hands of sinful people, he gathered in the place that was called the upper room. And there, during the Passover meal, the Lord took bread. And when he had blessed it, he broke it saying, take and eat, for this is my body. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, toward the end of the Passover meal, the Lord took the cup of wine, and he said, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you and for the sins of many. The apostle who was sent to us with the good news said that as often as we eat of the bread and drink of the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. In a moment of sacrament that points us to the living Christ, has everyone received a communion kit this evening? Better yet, has anyone not received one? Did anyone not get one? I brought two up here in case someone needed one. Okay. All good? Okay. Then I invite you to peel back the layer on the bottom that has, if you turn it upside down, the narrow end, the bottom, has the wafer that reminds us of the bread that was broken by Christ and to hear his words afresh to say to us, take and eat, for this is my body. Remembering the experience that was had that first communion, let's peel back the top part now and reveal the cup that holds the juice within it, and hear him say to us, this is the cup of Christ, drink of it one and all. And let us conclude this time of sacrament in an attitude of prayer. Blessed God, throughout these 40 days, as I'm sure we will sing about in short order soon, Throughout these 40 days, give us your insight, your wisdom, your word. Remind us what our purpose is. And when the opportunities come and the doors are open, give us the strength and the wisdom to walk through them. And for as many as you have imagined to come and find shelter and nurture here, We ask, Lord, please bring them to us that we might welcome them, that we might learn from them and they from us that which has been entrusted that is an eternal written and living word. For in all things, we magnify the Christ and pray that he would be found his face in the face of each one who is called by his name and called according to his purposes. In that precious name, we trust and pray. Amen. We don't have fanfare or even music that we will depart this service from. This is a different different kind of experience. 
I will encourage you to depart in silence and to contemplate the things we have discussed this evening. But if you would like to receive the symbol of being identified with the one who would identify himself with you in his death, his atoning death, if you would like that, you could come forward and receive the mark of the ash upon your forehead, should you like. Please come. sister, our disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Walk with he who walks with you. Amen. Yeah, Lord, okay. The of the Lord, called according to his purposes. Let his purposes be your purposes and walk with him, my sister. Nikki, you are a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Walk with the one who walks with you. I'll be with you, my sister. Rich, you are a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Walk with the one who walks with you. Amen. God bless you, brother. John, you are a faithful disciple of the Lord. Make a joyful noise unto him this day and forever. Amen. Linda, you are a disciple of the Lord. Walk beside the one who walks beside you. Amen. Chester, you are a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. God be with you and walk with the one who walks with you, even Jesus our Lord. Amen. Nancy, you are in the habit of making a joyful noise before the Lord. Walk beside him as he walks beside you. Keith, my brother, you are a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Walk beside him who walks with you always. Amen. Gera, you are a faithful sister in Christ. Walk beside the Lord who walks with you always. God be with you, sister. Ed, you are a prayer warrior and a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Walk with the Lord who walks beside you. Amen. God bless you, brother. David, you're a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Walk beside the one who walks with you always. Amen. David, you are a true disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. May he walk beside you as you walk with him always. God bless you, brother. Three straight Davids. Yeah. <laughs> God be with you, brother. Walk beside the Christ who walks beside you. Give my love to Sherry. Birthday boy, thank you for your service to the Lord. Walk beside the Christ who walks beside you. Amen, my brother. Brian, you are called according to his purposes. Walk beside the Christ who walks beside you.